Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So now we're going to go through question 7 in the November 19 paper 3, which is a rigid body mechanics question in the new syllabus. So here we were given a flywheel made of some solid disc with mass, radius and everything. And we have some string with negligible thickness wound around this axle, so that makes the whole thing spin and this uh, motor exerts a tension force through the string onto this inner axle which makes this uh, whole assembly rotate and we also have the normal force and the weight force and we are given the moment of inertia of this system and well firstly we need to state the torque provided by the force w so the weight force about the axis of the flywheel and well, this is a very easy mark, it's just uh, zero because we know that any force going through an axis has a torque of zero around that axis. And so, for example, we know that, let's say we have, so, let's say we have a beam, maybe this is a more common example, and we know that if we apply some force to it, some load maybe, let me put it here, so let's say that this is a wall so it's just like put in there and then we have some force pushing it down like this then we know that we're going to have a torque if we for example look at this point we want to see the torque about this point then we will have some distance and we will multiply it with the force because again the distance is just a perpendicular line drawn from the force to the line of the axis and the length of this distance is going to be the arm of the force. And that's why we will use torque is equal to F times D. But let's say now the force is pushing the rod like this. Let's say we have some F2. Then this force will not exert any torque about this point because it goes through this point like this. It, has, it goes directly through. So if we would want to find this distance, well, the distance would just be zero because it doesn't exert any torque actually. So like they're on the same line. So like the thickness of this would have to be like the distance, which, but that's just zero. So it doesn't exert any torque. So this is a very important concept to remember that if a force, like the, the line of the force, if we were to extend this arrow over here, that's what this dotted line is trying to represent. If we extend that line and it passes through the axis of rotation, then we will always have zero torque produced by that force. And well, here in this question, this is our axis of rotation. And we very clearly see that the weight passes through this point, actually. And we also see that the tension has some distance away from this point. And that's why the tension will be able to produce a, a torque about this point and make it rotate. All right, so now we are given a graph here and we're told that the flywheel is initially at rest. At time t equals zero, the motor is turned on and this time varying tension force acts on the flywheel. So, and it varies with this uh, function over here. This uh, first linear and then a constant function. And we need to identify the physical quantity represented by the area under the graph. So, I think there are two main ways to approach this. We can first of all look in our data booklet and see that we have this equation. So the angular momentum is equal to the torque times the change in time. And well, when we look at the area of this, so if we look at all of this area and we would want to calculate the area, we would multiply the, the y-axis with the x-axis as that's how we find the area of a common shape. For example, if we would just want to find the area of this uh, rectangle here, we would take this side and multiply it by this side to find the area. But when we do that, we also multiply the units and everything else. So then that would be just the same as torque times time. So like torque times the change in time technically, which will give us angular momentum. So, so what this uh, area will show us is the change in angular momentum. Mm 
Maybe another way to think about this, if you don't remember this formula or you just don't look at it, we could also think about this in a simple mechanics situation. So we know that in mechanics, torque is just force and time is just still time. So suppose we had a graph of force against time and the question would also be, what does the area under this graph represent? And maybe it's more well known that Newton's second law can also be written like force is equal to the change in momentum over change in time in a just linear motion. So we see that the change in momentum is force times the change in time, which is indeed the area under this graph. So the, I'll write the force here so it's not so confusing. So we have T on the x-axis and force on the y-axis. And from this uh, Newton's second law, we see that the force times the change in time will be the change in momentum. And this is completely analogous to, to the rotational motion uh, question. It's just that we have different symbols here. But other than that, it's equivalent. So we need to show that the angular velocity at t equals 5 is 200 radians per second. So now we know this physical quantity represented by the area. We can use this knowledge. So we can calculate the area under the graph. So we know area is going to be the change in angular momentum. And we also know that angular momentum is the moment of inertia times the angular speed. So the area, well, we can just split it into a triangle and a rectangle. This will be the triangle and this will be the rectangle. So that will just be um, 0 0.04, as we have to make sure that we take this 10 to the minus 2 into account. So there's 0 point, no, zero, just 0 0.4 times the time which is 1 divided by 2 and then we add the area of the rectangle which was uh, again just 0 0.4 high and uh, 4 seconds wide so that will give us 1.8 kilograms meters squared per second so that's the units of a uh, change in angular momentum and so if we want to calculate the angular speed all we need to do is uh, Divide this, divide this 1.8 by the moment of inertia of the whole system. And well, what is the moment of inertia? Well, luckily at the start we were provided with this relationship, 1 half mr squared. So 1 half mr squared. So if we plug in all of the values, 1 half times the mass, which was uh, 5 kilograms. And well, the radius, this might be a little bit problematic which one to plug in. Either this 6 centimeters or this uh, 1.2 centimeters. But, well, we need to calculate the moment of inertia of the entire assembly. Like this tension force isn't only rotating the small inner part. No, it has to rotate the entire, entire like disc. Also the outer part. This outer part is like physically attached to this axle. And so this tension has to rotate everything together. So it has to do work against this whole system. And like the amount of force it has to exert against the system to make it accelerate by some amount is also known as the moment of inertia. Kind of like how much a system is able to oppose rotational motion. That's kind of the definition of moment of inertia. So we're going to have to take the whole radius over here. So this uh, 6 centimeter value, which is 0 0.06 meters. So times 0 0.06 squared. And well, if we evaluate this, we get 200 radians per second. Maybe it's more elegant to write it like this. Then we need to calculate the maximum tension in the string. And well, tension here is, well, we can use, again, the relationship that torque is equal to tension times uh, the distance. And we need to calculate this tension. So we know tension is going to be the maximum torque so because we want the max tension, so max torque divided by the distance of this, like the arm of this uh, tension. So we know that the maximum torque will be 0 0.04, as we see that from the graph. The motor stops increasing the torque from that point. And well, the distance here 
Here, we no longer need to take this 6 cm, but rather this 1.2 cm, as we need to look at the distance from the, from the tension to the axis of rotation, which is only this little part over here, not the entire thing. So it has a pretty small arm compared to the length of the diameter of the whole thing. So that was 1.2 centimeters, so 0 0.012 meters. And this will give us 33.3 newtons. So it's just important to always keep in mind what radius you are currently using. And then part C, at t equals five seconds, the string becomes fully unwound and disconnects from the flywheel and the flywheel remains spinning around the axle. It's in translational equilibrium, distinguish between translational and rotational equilibrium. Well, this is like just a definition you have to remember, but I will write them down here. So translational equilibrium just means that sum of all forces, so sum of all forces equals zero, whereas rotational equilibrium means that the sum of all torques equals zero. So if we would look at uh, every force acting on this wheel and we, we would add them up vectorially, then we would have to get zero. And if we would calculate the net torque on this uh, a flywheel then we would have to get zero for it to be in rotational equilibrium so that it doesn't rotate all right or or it rotates at a constant speed not speeding up or anything as here again this just means that the net torque is zero which could either mean that it's at zero speed or at constant speed but technically zero speed is also a constant speed so that just means that it's at constant speed of zero or some some uh, real value and then part two the last part of this question we are told that at t equals five seconds it has an angular velocity of 200 radians per second and this support exerts a constant frictional force frictional torque around the axle and the flywheel comes to rest after 8,000 revolutions and we need to calculate the magnitude of this frictional torque well just to preview this solution, we know that torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the acceleration. And the moment of inertia, we already know. We already calculated, we know how to calculate. And so we only need to find this acceleration. Like what's the deceleration of this flywheel due to this frictional torque? And well, we have actually everything given here. We can use the formula that V final squared is equal to V omega initial squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in angle. So the displacement, the angular displacement covered. So we know final speed is zero. Initial speed is 200 squared plus two times alpha. That's what we don't know. And then how much distance we covered? Well, we are told we make 8,000 revolutions. And in one revolution, we will cover a distance of two pi because we always need to consider this Angle, angle in radians, not in degrees. So if we make, if in one revolution we would cover 2 pi, then in 8,000 we would make 2 pi revolutions or 2 pi angle technically. And then if we rearrange for A, we get that A is minus 0 0.398 radians per second squared. This negative just means that it's decelerating obviously. And so now we have everything we need we just plug it in. So our acceleration was 0 0.398 and we multiply it with the same value. So the moment of inertia was just one half mr squared. So this is the same thing we used in the previous question. So the mass was 0. Point, I mean 5. And then the radius was again 0 0.06 squared as we have to consider again the whole moment of inertia of the whole system as this frictional torque has to uh, slow down the entire system so we need the torque the moment of inertia of the entire system so this will be just 3.58 times 10 to the minus 3 newton meters and so this was the 
end of this question. I hope I was able to help with this question and uh, see you in the next one.